Yeah. MSNBC, including Chuck Todd and NBC's Meet the Press, have continued to push this anti-Sanders narrative. Now, it's one thing to only have on people that support every other candidate in the Democratic primary, but it's another thing to actually publish fake poll numbers to try and fit the narrative that you're trying to sell. So this is something that uh, Meet the Press did last week, but they also continued it and continued it uncorrected this weekend. So first, let me show you what they did last week. So as uh, David Sirota, uh, David Sirota tweeted out on May 21st, great trend. Yesterday, a new poll showed Bernie Sanders now tied for first in Iowa. Now today, the new Quinnipiac poll shows Bernie with the largest month-to-month -month gain of any Dem candidate, plus five points after a big month of campaigning across the country. Now, this plus five in the Quinnipiac poll, <laughs> interestingly, last week turned into a negative five on MSNBC's uh, Meet the Press. So check out this screenshot that they published. Minus five for Bernie Sanders under that Quinnipiac poll where he was actually pu uh, plus five. So this was the only number here that was wrong. And they did this to push a certain narrative. Now, if you don't believe me, all you have to do is dig into the numbers and see it for yourself. I'll link to this below the video. MSNBC published a fake poll number and they have yet to correct it. So as 21st Century FDR on Twitter uh, pointed out here, on April 30th, 2019, in a Queen, uh, Quinnipiac University poll, Sanders was 11%. And on May 21st, 2019, the very poll that MSNBC was supposed to be citing showed Sanders plus 5 at 16%. So he went up 5 points in that Quinnipiac poll. But as I said, MSNBC, and as you saw, published a fake poll number saying that he was actually minus five in that Qu uh, Quinnipiac poll. And this entire narrative continued into this weekend on NBC's Meet the Press. Yamish, uh, in the Democratic primary polling, we've had a couple of recent polls, and there's one tr undeniable trend. Bernie Sanders seems to be getting squeezed from two sides. Joe Biden got in, his numbers grew. Bernie Sanders got lower, and Elizabeth Warren has been growing. And in some ways, Yamish, what was interesting, I think it was in the Monmouth poll, the less you were paying attention, the more likely you were a Bernie Sanders supporter. The point being, Biden took a bunch of soft supporters. Warren, with I have a plan for that, is starting to get traction. Bernie seems to be a candidate all of a sudden trying to figure out how to get traction again. Well, this is the dilemma of 2020 because Bernie Sanders in 2016 was the flagship progressive candidate. If you liked Warren, if you liked other people, you really found your candidate in Bernie Sanders. Now you have Elizabeth Warren and other people talking about the same kind of legislation, same policies. I was talking to someone from the Warren campaign today. They wouldn't comment on polls, but they made a point to say, first of all, she's been to 18 states plus Puerto Rico. She's also someone who's held 81 town halls. That person was basically making the case, look, she's doing just as much as him. And I was thinking, about how Senator Warren has been setting herself apart. Apart from being the first candidate to talk about impeaching the president, she also decided not to go on Fox News and right. hold that town hall. And I asked that campaign person, well, you know, tell me a little bit more about that decision. They pointed me to the threat and said, look, she was not, she didn't mince any words with Fox News. She said they're hate-filled propaganda right. network. As a result, she's basically saying, this is the camp that I'm going to be in. Obviously, Bernie Sanders says, I want to go after those he voters. He was the first one to yeah. do a Fox town hall. Yeah, yeah, and then, of course, you have Joe Biden, who is, who is already trying to claim that he's the most progressive candidate, that's of course going to be pushed back and pushed back on. But there's this idea that Bernie Sanders isn't the hot new kid anymore. And I know that that's interesting <laughs> to say about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that really... <laughs> All right. Before I get to uh, the incredible <laughs> lie that was in this uh, segment, let me first address uh, some of Yamiche's comments here saying Bernie is not the new hot kid. Bernie Sanders has the most individual donors. He has the most individual donors also below $200, and he also has the most volunteers. This is somebody that actually, on the ground, by far has the most support. But you only have commentators on mass media trying to uh, push a, a fake narrative around this, saying that, oh, actually, his support has gone down because we're showing you these, these two poll numbers, which, if you noticed... They only showed two poll numbers. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, to to push this narrative that we want you to uh, to believe. So, uh, also, I guess I'll just mention here briefly that the Fox News town hall. I mean, 
I did a video on Warren not doing the town hall and, and Bernie doing it. I think it's clear Bernie doing the Fox News town hall was the correct decision, as you saw from the reaction that Bernie got and, uh, and the support that he got in, in polling as well from that. You need to be able to expose the Fox News audience to a different perspective. I don't want to go over that whole argument again because, I, again, I broke it down in, in two different videos, on one on Bernie, one on Warren. But I do think, it, I do think potentially in Warren's case, it may have been a good decision for her not to do the Fox News town hall because of what Fox News likely would have done to go after her. They like, uh, likely would have focused on the Pocahontas thing and try to distract her uh, from Warren's positions on policy issues. I don't think Warren as, is as equipped as Bernie Sanders is to talk to a Fox News audience. So potentially it was actually the right move for Warren. But at the same time, I don't think you should be congratulating a candidate for choosing to not speak to an audience. Now, let me show you this, uh, <laughs> what they did in this clip. So as I showed you earlier, the, the poll that they showed uh, from last week that was wrong, where this uh, minus five was actually a plus five, they must have heard it. They must have realized that, oh, shoot, yeah, we posted the wrong poll number. So instead of actually correcting it, they just took out the poll this week. So <laughs> instead of instead of showing the plus five, they're just like, you know what? We're not going to show the Quinnipiac poll at all. We're just going to show Monmouth and Fox News as a way to continue this phony narrative that we have. And during that segment, Chuck Todd also said, um, uh, I think it was from the Monmouth poll. Uh, the less you were paying attention, the more likely you were a Bernie Sanders supporter. That was actually from the Quinnipiac poll that you decided to not show on your show because it also showed that Bernie Sanders was plus five. I mean, this, it's not even, like, it's, it's not even a secret. that They're clearly, whether it's the producers, I, I don't even think it's necessarily Chuck Todd. I don't think Chuck Todd is all that bright. I think it's behind the scenes. They have a narrative to push. These are massive corporations that don't want to pay more in taxes, that don't want to pay their employees properly, that don't want to offer certain benefits, that don't want to anger their advertisers like big pharma advertisers by uh, pushing a candidate that supports Medicare for all and uh, Bernie who on a constant basis attacks, uh, attacks big pharma. So there are all these different interests, whether it's advertisers, whether it's the bottom line of these massive companies personally, whatever it is, they are clearly pushing a narrative that is anti-Sanders, even to the point of publishing fake poll numbers. Now, let's actually look at uh, what the uh, the poll average has been so far in the Democratic primary. So uh, since Biden announced, he did go up and Sanders did go down. But as you've seen, or as you see here, Biden is dropping off again. And Sanders is beginning to go up, though he has dipped slightly uh, recently. So this is, it's important to remind people, first of all, how early it is, but also how much these numbers can and will change once the primary gets going, once there's actually a debate, once there is actually a real discussion and more people paying attention to who these candidates are and what they represent. It's important to also remind people of what happened in 2016, where Bernie Sanders closed a 60-point gap against Hillary Clinton. So this is somebody who, it's not even about Sanders as much as it's about what he represents. This is somebody that has been on the same side of every issue for the past 40 years. He is on the correct side of issues in terms of being, like, being for something like Medicare for All, which the vast majority of voters support, including a majority of Republicans support Medicare for All, whether it's higher taxes on the rich, whether it's getting out of these regime change wars. I mean, look at policy after policy after policy. On the vast majority of these issues, Bernie Sanders is on the correct side, not even in terms of the correct side, it being a progressive, but on the correct side of where the actual voters are, what the voters support, Sanders supports. So this is what I what I keep saying. These poll numbers are going to change. And I mean, the other the flip side of that is that the media, the mass media definitely has an impact. So segments like this, pushing this idea that Sanders is going down, that uh, Warren is is 
rising in the polls, even even though she is, but slightly <laughs> nowhere near Bernie Sanders, or that Biden has this incredibly str- uh, strong support. These sorts of narratives, they do have an impact on the average cable news viewer, on just the average person that doesn't really follow politics closely, that doesn't watch you know YouTube videos or doesn't actually dive into these numbers. This will have an impact. So while I do think and I do hope that these poll numbers will change dramatically once the the debates get going and once the actual discussion um, really heats up, it's not a guarantee because cable news and the mass media still has an impact on how these politicians are uh, perceived um, nationwide and in terms of their potential to actually gain support in the primary. So if you continue to see... I mean, and we will continue to see MSNBC, CNN, Washington Post, New York Times continue to smear Bernie Sanders and in some cases post fake poll numbers. This will have a negative impact on Bernie Sanders. But the hope is that enough people will be paying attention to what Bernie's actually saying himself, that he'll be able to get over this this clear attempt to take Bernie down in the Democratic primary.